When I started analyzing the initial data from this new electric motor developed by Tesla, it immediately became clear that this was not a simple incremental evolution. What I was witnessing was a complete break with everything we knew about traditional automotive engines. For the first time, technologies that previously belonged exclusively to the aerospace industry were being applied directly to a car designed for the masses, something that, until recently, would have sounded like science fiction. The heart of this revolution lies in the carbon fiber-wrapped rotor, a material whose tensile strength exceeds 3,000 megapascals, surpassing steel by multiple orders of magnitude. Lighter, more rigid, and extremely stable, this rotor not only withstands extreme forces, but redefines the physical limits of what an electric motor can endure in terms of rotational speed, durability, and thermal efficiency. Reaching speeds of up to 20,000 RPM, this motor breaks a historical barrier in automotive engineering. Conventional electric motors begin to experience structural deformations and magnetic losses much sooner. Here, however, carbon fiber acts as a structural shield, maintaining the integrity of the rotor even under violent centrifugal forces, something that completely transforms the dynamic behavior of the assembly. This extreme stability allows for a silent yet crucial advancement the reduction of the air gap between the rotor and stator. By decreasing this gap by up to 20%, magnetic efficiency increases measurably, delivering more torque with less wasted energy. It's not just more power. It's power applied intelligently, precisely, and with energy savings. The thermal impact of this architecture is also impressive. Unlike traditional metals, the carbon fiber structure exhibits more predictable and robust thermal behavior, allowing the engine to operate in extreme conditions without accelerated degradation. This means less accumulated heat, less need for complex cooling systems, and greater stability throughout the vehicle's lifespan. The manufacturing method for this rotor is as revolutionary as the material itself. The use of the AFP system, the same concept employed by SpaceX in the construction of structural rocket components, ensures automated fiber deposition with millimeter precision. Each layer is positioned in a calculated way, eliminating micro defects, internal bubbles, or structural inconsistencies that could compromise performance at high speeds. The result of this process is a component produced in less than four minutes, something almost unthinkable when we talk about structural carbon fiber. This manufacturing speed not only reduces costs, but also enables large-scale production paving the way for this technology to move beyond the exclusive domain of experimental hypercars and reach an affordable vehicle like the Tesla Model 2. The projected durability of this engine completely redefines the concept of automotive lifespan. With fewer moving parts, less internal friction, and a simplified cooling system, it is expected to easily exceed 2 million miles of operation. We are talking about an engine that can survive several generations of use, something that radically changes the logic of ownership, resale, and even autonomous fleets. Another direct effect of this compact and lightweight architecture is the design freedom it offers the vehicle. With less space occupied by the engine, there is more volume available for better distributed batteries, optimized thermal systems, and greater interior comfort. Every kilogram saved in the powertrain translates into greater range, better handling, and greater overall efficiency. As these pieces fall into place, it becomes clear that the Tesla Model 2 is not being designed merely as an affordable electric car, but as a technological manifesto. A vehicle that proves that extreme performance, energy efficiency, and mass production are not incompatible concepts, but parts of the same equation when engineering is rethought from the ground up. When the performance figures started to emerge, it became clear that this engine wasn't just optimizing efficiency but breaking limits traditionally associated with supercars. The power-to-weight ratio of over 10 kilowatts per kilogram isn't just an impressive technical statistic. It's a direct indication of how every gram of the system was designed to deliver maximum work with minimum energy waste. This extreme efficiency translates into something almost unbelievable in practice. Acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in less than 2 seconds. This is not a marketing gimmick or a special mode activated under ideal conditions. It is the direct result of the rotational stability of the carbon fiber rotor, which allows maximum torque to be applied instantaneously, continuously, and without oscillations. 
Unlike traditional engines, where internal vibrations limit power delivery at high RPMs, here the movement is virtually perfect. The rotor spins as a single rigid body, without micro deformations, ensuring that every electrical impulse is converted into real mechanical force at the wheels. The sensation is not one of progressive acceleration, but of immediate movement, almost as if the car were being pulled by the space ahead. Even with this level of performance, the energy consumption is surprising. At a constant speed of 120 km per hour, the system consumes approximately 11 kilowatt hours per 100 km. This value is up to 10% lower than that of direct competitors, even while delivering more power, greater stability, and less noise. This demonstrates that efficiency is not only linked to the battery, but also to the intelligence of the motor assembly. Speaking of batteries, another crucial point is the relatively compact capacity needed to achieve a range of between 480 and 550 kilometers. With less than 55 kilowatt hours, the vehicle achieves figures that previously required much larger batteries. This reduces overall weight, production costs, and environmental impact without sacrificing the user experience. The mass balance provided by the compact engine dramatically improves the vehicle's weight distribution. With a lower center of gravity and better weight distribution between the axles, the dynamic behavior becomes predictable, stable, and extremely precise. Cornering is done with more confidence, and traction remains consistent even under maximum acceleration. Interior silence is another side effect of this refined engineering. The absence of structural vibrations and the smoothness of the magnetic field reduce noise levels to below 60 decibels at cruising speeds. This places the cabin on a level normally reserved for luxury sedans, creating a driving experience almost isolated from the outside world. This smoothness doesn't compromise responsiveness. On the contrary, the instant torque combined with refined electronic control allows for microscopic adjustments in power delivery. The car responds precisely to the accelerator command without delays, jerks, or loss of traction, creating a feeling of absolute control that redefines the relationship between driver and machine. Looking at the product as a whole, it becomes clear that the Tesla Model 2 isn't just competing with other electric vehicles in the same segment. It's invading territory previously dominated by hypercar brands, but it does so with energy efficiency, quiet operation, and drastically lower operating costs. All of this reinforces a central idea. Extreme performance doesn't have to mean waste, excessive complexity, or constant maintenance. This engine proves that it's possible to combine mechanical brutality and energy elegance in a single system, something that redefines what we expect from an affordable electric car. As I delved deeper into the industrial process behind this engine, it became clear that the real disruption lies not only in its performance, but in how it is produced. The ability to manufacture each rotor from carbon fiber in less than four minutes completely changes the logic of the automotive industry, which historically associates advanced materials with long, expensive, and unscalable cycles. This speed is only possible thanks to the complete automation of the AFP process, where robots control the fiber deposition with absolute precision. There is no improvisation, no human variation, no room for structural error. Each rotor leaves the production line with virtually identical mechanical properties, something essential when working with such extreme rotations and microscopic tolerances. The impact of this on costs is direct and measurable. The cost per kilowatt produced has fallen from approximately $11 to just over $8, a significant advance that completely repositions the electric motor as a high-performance, relatively low-cost component. This drop does not come from technical concessions, but from pure industrial efficiency. Another strategic point of this architecture is the drastic reduction in the use of rare earth elements. By decreasing the dependence on neodymium and dysprosium by between 60 and 75 percent, the engine becomes less vulnerable to geopolitical bottlenecks and market fluctuations. This represents not only cost savings, but also production security on a global scale. This change has profound implications for the future of the industry. Less dependence on critical materials means greater predictability, greater industrial autonomy, and a smaller environmental impact. Sustainability here is not just rhetoric, but a direct consequence of intelligent and well-executed technical choices. The scalability of this solution is already being considered in the factory design phase. The new plants in Texas and Mexico were specifically designed for this engine architecture, with modular, flexible, and highly automated lines. 
This allows for rapid volume adjustments without compromising quality or efficiency. This industrial flexibility opens doors to something even more ambitious. The standardization of ultra-high performance engines across different platforms. The same concept can be adapted for rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, or commercial applications, all from a common base, further reducing costs and logistical complexity. In the long run, this transforms the engine into a truly durable asset, with maintenance reduced by up to 40% in the first 300,000 kilometers. The total cost of ownership drops dramatically. It's not just cheaper to buy the vehicle, it's cheaper to maintain it over decades of use. This factor completely changes the equation for fleets, mobility services, and even autonomous vehicles. An engine designed for millions of kilometers, with minimal wear and predictable behavior, is exactly what this type of application demands. The engineering here isn't just looking at the individual driver, but at entire mobility systems. By combining extreme performance, accelerated production, lower costs, and independence from critical materials, this engine makes it clear that we are facing a structural shift in the automotive industry. It's not an isolated innovation, but a new standard that is forcing competitors to rethink not only their products, but their entire production chain. What is most striking when observing the impact of this engine on the market is how it dismantles, piece by piece, the old separation between affordable cars and high-performance cars. For decades, extreme power was synonymous with exclusivity, expensive maintenance, and high fuel consumption. Here, that logic simply ceases to exist, replaced by a model where efficiency and brutality coexist without conflict. This repositioning directly affects consumer perception. A vehicle under $25,000 that delivers acceleration comparable to hypercars is not just a good deal, it's a cultural shock. It redefines expectations, raises the standard of the segment, and forces the entire market to adapt to a new technological benchmark. The most interesting thing is that this performance doesn't require sacrifices in daily use. On the contrary, the smooth handling, low noise level, and efficiency at constant speeds make the car more comfortable and rational than many models focused exclusively on fuel economy. Performance ceases to be in excess and becomes an always available reserve. This power reserve, combined with the engine's structural stability, also dramatically improves active safety. The immediate responsiveness allows for faster evasive maneuvers, safer overtaking, and superior control in critical situations. Here, performance isn't just about excitement, it's about protection. Another side effect of this engineering is the emotional longevity of the product. A car that maintains high performance for years, without perceptible degradation, does not age in the same way as traditional vehicles. It remains relevant, desirable, and functional for much longer, breaking the cycle of accelerated obsolescence. This also changes the relationship between consumer and manufacturer. Instead of relying on frequent replacements, the focus shifts to software updates, system optimization, and continuous improvements via electronic control. The physical engine becomes a stable platform, while evolution takes place in the digital realm. In the urban context, this efficiency redefines the role of the compact car. It ceases to be merely an economical means of transport and becomes an advanced technological object, capable of offering driving pleasure without compromising sustainability or operating costs. The city doesn't demand slowness, it demands intelligence. The competing industry feels this impact immediately. Traditional manufacturers, stuck in outdated architectures and complex production chains, struggle to respond as quickly. It's not enough to copy the engine. It's necessary to reinvent factories, processes, and mindset, something that takes years, not months. This structural advantage creates a domino effect. The more vehicles equipped with this technology hit the streets, the more evident the gap becomes between those who adopted the new engineering and those who remained in the past. The market begins to reward systemic efficiency, not just design or marketing. Ultimately, the carbon fiber motor doesn't just transform a specific car. It redefines the concept of accessible electric mobility, proving that real innovation doesn't have to be elitist. On the contrary, when well executed, it becomes even more powerful by reaching millions of people. When we design an engine to last millions of kilometers, we're no longer just talking about a mechanical component, but a new concept of asset. This engine isn't born with an emotional or technical expiration date. It's designed to endure decades of intensive use without losing its essential characteristics. This completely changes how we think about ownership, 
value, and longevity in the automotive sector. Extreme durability ceases to be an invisible differentiator and becomes a central selling point. Less internal friction, less accumulated heat, and fewer parts subject to wear create a system that ages slowly and predictably. Instead of abrupt failures, the engine's behavior remains stable, reliable, and consistent over time. This type of reliability is precisely what enables the next stage of electric mobility. Its intensive use in fleets, shared services, and autonomous applications. An engine that can operate continuously for years, with minimal maintenance, makes economically viable what previously seemed only theoretical. In this scenario, the car ceases to be an asset that depreciates rapidly and becomes a generator of value over time. Whether in prolonged personal use or in sharing models, the reduced operating cost transforms each kilometer driven into real efficiency, not accelerated wear and tear. The integration of extremely durable hardware and intelligent electronic control creates an almost organic system. The engine responds to the software, the software learns from use, and the system evolves without the need for constant physical replacement. Updates become digital, not mechanical, further extending the vehicle's lifespan. This approach also drastically reduces the environmental impact throughout the life cycle. Producing fewer engines, replacing them less frequently, and extracting fewer critical materials generates a powerful cumulative effect. Sustainability here is not just zero emissions in driving, but total efficiency from cradle to long-term use. From an urban perspective, this means fewer discarded vehicles, less industrial waste, and less pressure on global supply chains. The electric car ceases to be a fast-moving consumer product and becomes more like a durable piece of equipment, almost like mobile infrastructure. This concept even changes how cities can plan mobility. More reliable, quieter, and more efficient vehicles can operate continuously, integrating individual, shared, and autonomous transportation into a single technological ecosystem. Looking at this scenario, it becomes clear that the carbon fiber engine wasn't just designed to impress with acceleration figures. It was designed to support a new economic model where performance, durability, and efficiency coexist in a logical and scalable way. More than a technical innovation, we are witnessing a philosophical shift in automotive engineering. A return to the idea of building something to last, but with the most advanced tools of the digital age and industrial automation. When you put all these pieces together, it becomes impossible to see this engine as merely a one-off advancement. The carbon fiber rotor, the automated large-scale production, the reduction of critical materials, and the extreme durability form a coherent whole, designed from the outset to break historical limits in the automotive industry. Nothing here is accidental. Everything follows an integrated engineering logic. What's most impressive is how this technology redefines the balance between cost, performance, and longevity.